This is my 1952 Chrysler Imperial. I bought it as my quarantine project car, and it, it still doesn't drive. The last time we saw the Imperial, we did manage to get the car driving all on its own with one critical flaw. The transmission was leaking oil all over the road. So I thought, no big deal. I went to a shop and they quoted me 3,500 bucks to fix the rare and antique drivetrain. And I said, F that. So instead of forking all them dollars, I decided to get in touch with Gearstar Transmissions and they hooked me up with a brand new 4L60 transmission. So we got to pull this old drivetrain, we got to install the new transmission onto the old engine, then put it back in the car, install the transmission's brain, get some other things buttoned up. Oh God. We're leaking. Is this happening right now? That's so cool. And finally I take this thing on a drive. Plan of attack. Today, we need to take the hood off, unbolt everything holding the drivetrain to the car, and then lifting it out the front of it. We thought about going from the bottom, but there's just too many cross braces and things in the way. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to do the hard way. Now with the hood off, we can you know disconnect everything, holding it in from the top. Probably take the radiator out as well after we drain that. Make sure it's all disconnected in here and then lift the car up. All right, so down here, we can get a better sense of what was leaking in the transmission. It's a lot of oil underneath here. Oh God, do you see that? There's some busted seals in here somewhere. So we're gonna replace everything from here back. We gotta figure out how to get this whole thing out. That locking ring right there is what we suspect is holding us up. We're heating it up so we can maybe get it loose because right now there's no way to shrink the size of the drive shaft and get it out. And we're just uh, making that ring heat up a little bit, expand so we can loosen it. Oh, it's coming. Yeah. Hey, look at that. They're back. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh. All right, that's the end of day one. We didn't get quite as far as we wanted to, but you know what? Anytime you work on an old car, it's kind of roll of the dice of exactly what you're gonna roll into. And speaking of which, we got this brand new Fuzzy Dice t-shirt. Check out that hit on the front with the big yellow dice. And on the back, you know what? We also have a, another special piece of merch. Tim, how about you throw those over? Brand new donut yellow Fuzzy Dice. I love these, but we're not gonna put these in until we're on the road. That's how we're gonna christen this thing. All right, it's so the top of day two. Motor and drivetrain still in the car, but we've got everything disconnected from the drivetrains. Oh, this is my dad. This is Scott. Say hi, dad. Cool. <laughs> okay, well, dad, uh, he came down from Atascadero. He's gonna be helping us out on this. Yeah, this is, this is cool, man. It's gonna be great. All right, so it's super cool having my dad here with us working on this project. You know, growing up, we did junior dragsters together. Then in high school, we uh, bought my 62 Dart, which is still in progress. We'll get to that someday. You don't say. Someday we'll get to that. <laughs> I mean, this is the reason I'm into this in the first place. It's his fault. Yeah, <laughs> totally my fault. <laughs> So the plan is we need to suspend the motor right now because if we just take the transmission off, it's actually gonna fall out of the car. So we're gonna suspend it from the top, hold it on, and then we're gonna pull that transmission out. And God willing, we'll be able to slap everything back together without pulling the motor, but we'll see how that goes. So this is how you suspend a motor. If you ever pull a transmission or need to work on motor mounts from the top, put it on the fender lines, and then you put a chain to the motor and hold her up. That is heavy. Where's Justin? Go. Nice. Oh. Nice. Go take that. Okay. It's coming. It's so close. Oh, there it is. Oh my god. Ooh. Is this happening right now? Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Oh my god. Sheesh. Taking the old torque converter out. This transmission had a torque converter and a clutch and a four speed automatic. Very strange, but ahead of its time. Got it? Yeah. Another really weird feature of this car, and another reason that I've kind of been dragging my feet on it, is that this engine, the engine block has an integrated bell housing. It's part of the transmission. This was only for like from 51 to 53, I think. Therefore, because it's so freaking weird, there's not a lot of aftermarket support for it. Always do your research before you buy a car and see if there's any weird shit. 
with it that keeps people from like actually supporting it. It'll save you a lot of headache. All right, with all the hardware just connected and everything loosened up, should be able to rip this guy right out. I'm gonna go ahead and goose it here on this jack. And look, it's already pulling out. It's always a big step when you're pulling a motor out, you know? But I feel like it's ultimately for the benefit of the job here. It'll make it a little easier. That's great. All right, here's our old fluid torque drive transmission. Let's get rid of this thing. It's crusty, it's dusty, it's old. And say hello to our new General Motors 4L60 four-speed automatic right here. We picked this thing up from Gearstar. They uh, built this thing with the weight and final drive and driving style in mind for this car. So this thing should be perfectly suited for what we want to do. It also has a bespoke adapter kit by Speed Gems to mate this modern transmission up to our old engine. Also, the brains of this transmission was supplied by US Shift. So we got everything we need to mate the engine and the transmission together and hopefully help it live inside this car. Now, hopefully with all these parts and all the knowledge that went into making this setup, I can finally have my rusty project car on the road without any leaks at all. And I can finally enjoy this thing after four years of ownership. So without further ado, let's get this thing in here, yeah? All right, while they're working on that, let me tell you a little secret. I don't clean my shoes off before I get in my car. I know, controversial, but here's the thing. When you're constantly running around and you're late all the time, I don't have time to worry about dirty floors. And thanks to today's sponsor, Tuxmat, I'll never have to worry. These floor mats are super functional and perfect for a dirty shoe boy like myself. I can pop them out, clean them off, and slap them back in just like that. They cover more area than my OEM mats and best of all, they're a perfect fit. These fit like a glove. Also, if you have any issues with them at all, Tuxmat has some of the nicest customer service people in the business. I've been using these floor mats for a few weeks now and they're absolutely fantastic. Did I get dirt and mud on them? Yes. Did I spill my coffee on them? Okay, yes. Did I drop my grandma's famous spaghetti and meatballs with a side salad and breadsticks on them? Okay, I'm sorry I like having a full course meal while driving. The main question is, are my floors dirty? Not a chance. If you want the best all year round floor protection for your vehicle, then buy Tuxmac. Visit Tuxmac.com or click the link below. Let's go get dirty, dog. We're gonna put all the adapter stuff onto the motor first, and then after that, get them together. All right, so this is the first piece of the adapter. It's the first piece of the adapter kit. It's just a little spacer that the flywheel will sit on. And it's a pretty snug fit, so we want to make sure that the holes line up because there is a set of holes on here that is closer to the other than all the other ones. My dad is just taking his calipers there, measuring them, and uh, making sure that we do it right the first time. It does look like it's that one, huh? Those ones look good. Cool. So our flex plate here, this is what the starter lives right here and spins this guy, and that's what starts your engine. There's one. Along with the new transmission, I also bought some other modernizing touches like this adapter here that will let us put contemporary modern oil filters on the car. This is the original oil filter right here. Really big, the filters are hard to find. Much easier just to have something where I could go to O'Reilly's or what have you and get a normal oil filter for the car. That is kind of like the kind of philosophy with a lot of these classics out there is replacing parts with things that you can find locally rather than having to get really niche stuff online that takes forever. All right, I mean, let's see if this fits here. Yeah, it goes on nice and snug, perfect. So the same company that makes that oil filter adapter, Hotheads Hemi, they also make the spacer so you can put on a more modern 318 mechanical fuel pump. This is the original fuel pump right here. It stopped working, can't really get these unless they're refurbished and all that BS. So I went ahead and ordered that and it just fits right on, it's great. So now, fuel pumps like this, they're also available on the street at auto parts stores. So again, another sort of pain in the ass proofing measure for the Hemi here. It's time to slam the transmission on and tighten down the torque converter. We're gonna get it up as high as we can and we're gonna keep this angle just so that we can kind of slide it right in and go slow. A little higher? Yeah, come up a little higher just to get over this. Keep pressure on it. There you oh. go. Some slid in. Yeah. 
Did it go in the hole? Yep. The drivetrain is in for now. That took a, how many dudes? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Almost eight guys. Probably the record for <laughs> engine installs here at Donut. All right, so motor's in, but now I'm gonna take this pole jack, but a prop up the back of this transmission so it's held up. Make sure the angle of the drive shaft is gonna go how we want it to, and then start mocking up uh, our brace over here for the transmission. I think it's looking pretty good. This has been a really fun week so far. We've had a few challenges, the typical setbacks you find, but now that the transmission is in the air and Adam has that cross member made up, we're so close to getting it in the car. And then once the cross member's on, we can take this jack down, drivetrain's free standing in the car. That's pretty big. That puts us like, I wanna say 65, 70% there. Then after that, it's all the little stuff. Big moment, buddy. I mean, this is it. See how everything aligns? Ooh. It's close. Oh, wow. It's kind of cheap. It's close. Oh, it's like, let's see. Ah. Ah. It wants to. There we go. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Last test. Stand back, stand clear, but let's pull this pull jack off. Ready? <laughs> Drop her down. Yeah. Yes. It's in the car. And it hasn't fallen out. All right. That's great. Oh my God, your pull ups. Look at Eddie, get us out of this bicep. <laughs> All right, the drivetrain is back in the car officially. Everything's bolted in, tightened. Yep. It's all good, it's freestanding on its own. Yep. It's awesome. Unfortunately, my dad has to go back to his home. So thank you, dad, for Aww. helping. Mr. Thanks. Yeah, we could not get, it's fun. And I'll, uh, I'll drive it up to the house when it's done. Oh also, yeah, hopefully. that's cool. All right, so there's still a lot left to do. So let's keep on going. This is the list of things we need to do. Obviously the core support needs to be secured back in, radiator, all that. But then there's just all those other little jobs. Like we're only like 50% done, really. Like I wanna say 65, 70% there. We've got three days now to get all this stuff done. It's just a lot of little stuff that adds up. All right, so first thing on the list is installing the core support. All the stuff that was in the car when we started is back in, so now let's add some new stuff. Here is our transmission cooler right here. This actually came off of our door car from back in the day. We use this because it's got AN fittings on it. AN fittings, a lot stronger than hose clamps. And since this is a racing cooler, that gives me a little bit more peace of mind. You know, this is a really heavy car, so that transmission is gonna be under a lot of load. And when you're going over hills and stuff, you wanna be able to cool your fluids efficiently. So, cooler right here. Best placing for it would probably be in front of the radiator, like so. I'm just gonna push it through. So this is just a little nylon mounting zip tie almost, because there's no mounting points on the cooler itself. We need this, these style mounts to hold it in place. So that's what we're gonna keep doing. Uh, I need two more, one down here and one down here. Then we'll slide the cooler on with a spacer uh, to make sure that we have enough room so that the AN fitting on the hose has enough room to thread on. trying to figure out the shift linkage. This little arm right here is connected to the column shifter in the car. We got a universal shifter linkage kit for this transmission from Low Car. Not to be confused with Low Car. I thought you stole our cars. No, 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 it's a company called Low Car. The stock shifter, column shifter, can work with this transmission. It's pretty awesome. My dad, he went on a master car, he bought a spacer that will keep these arms in line because you don't want them too crazy out of line. And this whole rod is universal since they don't know exactly how far your column shifter is gonna be from the transmission itself. So I've just made some marks here and now I'll have to carefully cut it to the correct length so our shifter will work. But it looks like it'll be pretty sweet. I wanna have more rod than I need initially. I don't wanna to be too short. So I'll cut here. We'll see how it lines up. It's looking money, dude. All right, now we gotta tighten all this hardware up, secure it, I'll hop in the cab, we'll row through the gears, see if it works. There's reverse, neutral, drive, three, two. Two is as low as it goes. I think that's because it's limited up here, unless I'm missing a, a gear maybe. 
Second, or, well, that might be second gear. All right, so we're adjusting the shifter on the bottom, the linkage down there. Right now, I don't have enough throw up top to get from park into all the way first gear or lowest gear. So I think we're just gonna have to make some adjustments on the arm on the transmission, and then we should be able to get all the gears that we need. Because you know what? We paid for all these gears. We might as well get them. Park, reverse, neutral, drive, three, two, one. Hell yeah, you got a transmission we can shift. That's sick, dude. So the wheels on the car right now, they're an archaic two-piece steel design. Long story short, the tires aren't holding air. So I had to go get some new wheels. I decided to go with another steel wheel design. They're primered right now. I just need to scuff them up with a little piece of Scotch-Brite. Got my spray paint right here. Let's go ahead and get it done. Came out with like a kind of semi-gloss finish. I'm pretty happy with it. It's not the best paint job I've ever seen, but it's not the worst either. All right, so the idea here is I'm just trying to get as little holes put into the firewall as possible. And I found one right here. And this is actually for this mechanical Speedo. We've got an electrical one now, so we're gonna pull this out and I think we'll feed all the wires through this guy right here. So now that I got a hole for all the wiring to go through, I'm gonna actually loom this guy together so that heat doesn't corrode the wires. After that, we're just gonna start feeding it through. We gotta mount our TPS or our throttle position sensor. We have to mount it somewhere inside underneath the hood. Right here on the fender well is good. And the rest has been crimped and readied and I kind of have a place for it underneath. So we're just gonna plug everything in. Now I'm switching it back on to make sure. Power? Yep, 11.76. Fantastic. Yep. And that is where we will power our unit. So we were looking for ignition source power, meaning when the key is on the ignition's on side or when the car is running, the power is getting sent to that specific place because we need to power the brain itself and we need to make sure that it's also off when we turn the key off. That way it doesn't drain the battery. All right, everything's wired up. The last thing I need to do is mount up the brain for this all so that the transmission knows when to shift, how to shift. It'll work with the TPS, all that kind of stuff. And I found a really nice place that tucks up behind the dash where it's gonna be just hidden away. That way you don't see any modern electronics in the car, kind of keep that vintage appeal. Uh, no one's tires just came in. They look a little skinny though. According to our size conversion chart I found online, this tire should work on these wheels. I just think maybe tire technology has advanced a little bit in the last seven, 70 years. I've installed a new carburetor here. This is a Holley two barrel. As you can maybe see, the flange on the carburetor is not the same as the one on the intake manifold. So a few months ago, I called up my dad and said, hey, I need an adapter. My dad was a machinist. He's retired now, he still has a few machines at his house. And he was able to whip up this guy right here, an adapter that'll let us make this carburetor to the original intake manifold. Very cool. So let's go ahead and see if it fits. Let's see if old man Sykes was able to get it together. There we go, fits perfectly. All right, so I'll secure that to that. We still have to make a block off plate for this guy. This was some sort of heat riser for the old carburetor. Moment of truth, Dad. All right, it fits. Awesome, the carburetor is on there. Dad, great job. I knew you could do it, dude. Just uh, throwing a fuel filter into the fuel line. There's no filter in the system right now, so all the rust and gunk that's probably still present, my fuel tank and hard lines, I don't want that going in the brand new carb. So throwing the fuel filter in line here before the carb. We just need to bolt down the carb. And with that, the last step is the throttle linkage. And this is a little bit too long for our Holly two barrel. So probably take about an inch and a half off, chop it, roll the sleeve on there so it's nice and strong. Then I put that sleeve over it and then zap that on as well to kind of give it a little bit extra rigidity. That is what that little bulge there is. 
Then just kind of cleaned it up with a sander just to make it nice and smooth. This is a TPS bracket. It's a universal style for a Holly. So basically they have two sections to where you can put it. The top one was in our way for the linkage itself. So just lop it off, smooth it out. We just leave it so this is our TPS throttle position sensor and it'll tell the brain where the throttle is. So let's say Nolan all of a sudden floors it, the transmission knows when to downshift, it knows when to cruise, all that. So it's cable driven, universal, mounted to the fender liner here. And then you're just gonna route it through onto the bracket, click it in, hook this onto the carburetor. And then we have a lot of line here where you can adjust wherever you want it. I don't know why that's so satisfying. <laughs> Dude, yes. That's so cool. This, this is a big right moment here. right now. Yeah, this thing right here, I mean, it's the, the marriage of antique and modern yeah. technology right here. Just getting this old engine to play with this new transmission, it's a big step. Who would have thought in 52 that oh. it would have such a modern twist later? We got our tires and wheels back. Look at that. It looks like they fit fine. Hopefully they don't make contact with the tie rod. I may have mismeasured something. Oh, thank God. Is it clear? It clears. Nice. Okay, here, let me show you. Let's see here. Never mind. <laughs> I just have to make some modifications to the hub. It's a, it's a, it's a whole thing. All right. Sorry, Trent. Everything else pretty much put together and ready to go. We got to fill her up with some oil. I went ahead and already added the zinc additive to protect the uh, sensitive cams and stuff. It's not really something to do on new cars, but on old cars, zinc is definitely necessary. Last thing to do is connect our transmission control unit to our terminal here. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is turn it over without the ignition coil connected so it won't fire over. We're just trying to get oil pressure before we fire it. I've got my oil pressure sensor down there, so we'll be able to see that it's doing that. It's time to go, baby. Fire it up. Hmm. Not seeing any oil pressure yet. So right now we have it cranking over and it's not that so much that we're worried about it not starting, but we're not seeing any fuel in the fuel filter. So that tells us that right now the fuel pump isn't pumping into our carburetor. Also something that's a little bit worrisome is we don't see any oil coming to the oil gauge over there. So we don't know what kind of pressure it's running, if any. This is wrong. Here we go. Let me see that fuel, baby. Yeah! All right. That was satisfying. My oil filter adapter is not tightened all the way. That's on me. The inlets and outlets are mixed up. That's on me. So hopefully it starts up now. Here we go. <laughs> you didn't run. I think it needs a little bit of tuning because it's idling pretty well. It's running. My foot's not on the gas. Cut it. There's only four pieces left for this thing. We need to put the hood back on, yep. put the air cleaner on the carburetor. We need to put coolant in here and the drive shaft, which is unfortunately not here. You gotta wait over the weekend for that to arrive. Just but makes you excited to come to work. It does. All we gotta do is just impact it with blue mark and this other blue mark. Okay. It's bueno. We've got our drive shaft here. One end has the <laughs> old school connector there. Going yep. to the old school diff. And then here we've got our slip yoke for the new transmission. This is the, the final piece. The final piece. Wow, dude, it's been like, what, 10 days? <laughs> cool. Four bolts. Four bolts. And we should be able to fire up, and drive it out of here. So we've got everything installed, so now it's just testing, seeing if everything's okay. Then we're gonna lift this car up a little bit so the wheels aren't touching the ground, and we're gonna put in the first, second, and see if it, if it rolls. Huh? 
let's see. We're leaking. Turn it off. I see a leak. Looks like it's on top of the intake manifold. No big deal. We'll throw some RTV on that, throw another nut on there. Hopefully get a nice watertight seal. So let's fire it up again and see how she runs. So right now we're just messing with the more. idle. We want to get it so that it's idling well when it's pulled, obviously. And I'm just messing with the idle and screw, which just opens or closes the butterfly ever so slightly. You don't want to do too much because you have a crazy high idle. If you go too low, it'll bog out and die. It feels like it's where it wants to be right now. Yeah. It's not like we'll leave it there. It appears we have the leak. I think it's the rear main seal, which is a big pain in the but that's a pain in the that I can pay someone to take care of, I think. We're gonna turn the car on again and see if the wheels turn. Put it in Ready? the drive. Oh, we're moving. Neutral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. wait. Drive. Hey -o! All right. Hell yeah. All and right. now, now keep it in drive, but press on the brakes. Hey, didn't stall. Great work, third. Yeah. Second gear. Fuck. Is it working? Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to go back up to see what that oil leak is, just so that we're squared away for the test drive, and then we're hitting the road. Well, with any luck and hope, the heat will expand the rubber, Yeah. and it will seal up. That's what I'm hoping, too. Which, you That's know. That's what I'm hoping, too. Happens? We're not going to get it to 100% not leak, but I don't care, we're gonna drive this thing. It's been 10 days and I wanna hit the road. Jack. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go! <laughs> Woo! Right. It starts! journey it's been guys thank you so much for all your help You're welcome thank You're welcome. you dad for all your help big thank you to gear star transmission speed gems and us shift for making this possible see you next time